showing you another dress up design. You all love the Mickey and Minnie designs so much, I decided to do one of Cinderella. And this whole before and after where she's in the torn dress that her stepsisters ruined into the fancy ball gown that her fairy godmother made is a design I've wanted to do for so long. It just seemed like the right moment to get it done. I love it. The dress itself, the fancy Cinderella blue ball gown is one of I think the best dresses I've ever sculpted. There's movement, it's got the swirls in it. I was just so happy with it when I got done with it. I hope you guys like it as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So we are going to begin with a blue sparkly background. Looks like a starry, beautiful little magical night. This color is just so perfect for the background and it has a built-in glitter to it. If you wanna leave something like that alone, obviously you can, it's so pretty. But if you wanna add a little bit more, I added a, just a bunch of swirling glitter going back and forth across the background. This would make a gorgeous combination design if you had just like swirling little, like these little swirls of glitter on the other nails with maybe a couple little stars here and there. I'm also going to place some circular um, ghost glitter in here as well just so that it has a little iridescent kind of bubbly look to the background so pretty I absolutely love the way that just the background of this nail is like I said if you're doing this as a set this would make such a nice kind of continuous background across all of them once you have all of those little glitters that you're picking out placed down I am just attaching them with a little smidge of clear acrylic I'm going to take and encapsulate the nail with a layer of clear acrylic over the entire thing really making sure that I surround all of that glitter when you're doing anything with glitter you want to make sure that your acrylic is slightly more wet or lumpy glitter I should specify so that the acrylic really settles in all the nooks and crannies around those glitter pieces so that there aren't any air bubbles or gaps after that has been fully cured you can go ahead and file it into shape with your e-file it is so satisfying to watch these designs come together especially if they happen to be a little bulky sometimes when you're doing multiple layers of encapsulation they tend to get a little bulky and then when you file them into shape and they're all sleek and beautiful it's so so satisfying once you're done with that now we're going to start sculpting our Cinderella base I'm going to start with her head and at the very very top of her head I'm going to place a little magnet into the nail it did not want to leave my rhinestone picker it was holding on tight after you have that teeny tiny little rhinestone placed make sure you add enough acrylic around it that it isn't going to fall off easily it has to really be embedded in the nail but you do want it at the at the 3d art level you don't want it to be actually encapsulated inside the nail after you have that one done you can just let her head her head cure and then you can go ahead and you can sculpt her body when you're sculpting cinderella you have to keep in mind her body position for how you want her dress to be in order to add the gloves because these magnets are a little too big even though they're so tiny they're a little too big to go inside her arms so her arms have to be in a position where when she's got the fancy ball gown on she's holding out She's holding her arms out and she's holding the edges of the dress up so that you can attach the gloves to the dress so that the gloves and dress are all one piece. That is if you want to make sure she has the gloves. Of course, if you want to just forget the gloves altogether, her arms could be in any position that they that you want. But if you do want to make sure those gloves are added to it because they are a classic piece of Cinderella's fancy ball gown outfit, then you need to make sure that in some way, shape or form, her hands or her arms are touching her dress. I have another magnet that is encapsulated inside her torso. You want to make sure that that one is placed inside her body in some position where it will be covered up by both dresses, the tattered dress and the fancy one. So you have to look at pictures of both and make sure that wherever you place it, it's someplace that is equally covered up. Any place from about, I don't know, boob height to um, like to her hips is safe, but I wouldn't put it anywhere else. You also want it to be somewhat near the middle of the garment area so that it's balanced and it's not really just attached on one side or the other, but the magnet will actually hold the entire piece down. When you are placing these magnets down, if you find that you're concerned that the single magnet, especially for the dress, isn't going to be enough to hold it in place, you can always do two. If you were to do two of the magnets, I would put one right about boob height and then I'd put the second one probably in a thigh and either thigh would be fine but to put the other one in one of her thighs just to get a little bit of distance between them to hold them in place I personally find especially for like a practice nail one magnet is sufficient and even for wearing it out and about this because the dresses are so conformed to her body they really kind of snap on and they hold very well so you don't have to worry about it too much but if you're really going to be wearing this say going to Disney World with it or something like that really crazy and you want to make sure it's going to last put two magnets in if you really want to be sure put three just you know extra security so if you're going to be doing something like that and you want to there's no issue or no harm adding extra magnets in you just want to make sure that there are enough 
So we've got her first leg, and then we're going to be adding in her second leg going down. When you're sculpting her position, like I said before, you need to just be aware of how her body is so that it seems appropriate for both scenarios. The one thing that's difficult with this design as far as how her body's positioned is obviously she's going to have different body language from upset with the torn dress to happy and beautiful and her face. We aren't changing the way her face looks. If you wanted to do that, what you would probably have to do is make it so that her head is not attached to the nail at all so that you would stop the sculpting on the nail with her neck and then have two heads so you'd sculpt head and hair all together separately and have a magnet embedded in the nail if you wanted to do that as far as like the dress up element of this design goes i wanted her head to be there because i feel like that makes it more of a dress up and i don't know less gruesome looking as you're decapitating cinderella but if you did want to have her have different facial expressions where she's you know sad and and tears coming down her face with the tattered dress and then happy and put together and primmed and prim and proper with the second one that would be the way to do it so i've got her hands there and to me it almost seems like the way her hands are positioned she could have like an oh no look at my dress and then oh my goodness look at my dress kind of an arm position is is the way that i thought about it so now we're going to after everything's been sculpted as far as her body goes and just in a nude color then we're going to wrap the nail with aluminum foil and press it down into all the nooks and crannies with something a silicone tool your fingernail a brush cover i actually find is really helpful to use as a little rolling pin to roll out some of the flat areas and get all the wrinkles out if there are any places that you can do that once you have it nice and snug onto the nail you're going to place two magnets into or on top of the ones that are already inside the nail or if you have more magnets obviously you place one on top of each one that's in there and then you're going to start sculpting the first dress and you can choose whether you do the tattered one or the fancy one i'm going to go with the tattered one to me it makes sense to do the one that she's wearing first in the movie first whether that makes sense to anybody else or not i don't know that's just the way that my brain works you know keep things in chronological order so we've got the underskirt that we're going to sculpt first with white acrylic and then afterwards you can sculpt on the overskirt but we're just going to start out with that nice layer of white when you're sculpting anything like this and you've got the different layers and they have magnetic pieces in them one of your biggest goals throughout the whole sculpting process is to make sure that those magnets aren't obvious sometimes depending on what the scenario is making them not obvious isn't necessarily super easy things might have to be slightly thicker than you would sculpt them if there wasn't a magnet involved which i would say is the case for any of these little dress up things obviously these magnets even though they are like i've said before tiny teeny tiny they're thicker than what her clothes would be so you just have to try to conscious consciously smooth them over and when you're doing that you don't want to make sure you have my words you want to make sure that the magnets aren't a lump so there's not like this huge hill and there's the magnet inside it's not you know it's not this big bump you want to just kind of smooth it over and want to make things nice and and continuous so that nobody would look at that and instantly think hey why is why is there that big bumpy spot right there or or that's weird there's a silver circle in the middle with that being said sometimes it's you know unavoidable but you want to try your best to make sure that it's just nice and smoothed over so that nobody would ever notice it for her hair i'm going to be sculpting that down with a kind of a warm goldenrod color and then we're going to be doing the rest of her dress so the overskirt and the bodice of the dress are with pink so i'm going to be using that it does have the different rips and tears in it so especially as you're sculpting the skirt you want to sculpt in those places that have a rip and when you're sculpting those in you just want to take the tip of your brush and kind of carve them out I really recommend looking at photographs whenever you're doing anything of this nature and you're making a design that's got um, some significant cultural meaning and somebody could look at it and think that, oh, it's not quite right. Look at some photographs, especially like the case with the way that the rips are in her dress. There's actually very specific positions that those rips are. And I honestly think that if somebody was a big Cinderella fan and they looked at it and the rips were in the wrong positions, they would know. I personally feel like I would recognize this and I wouldn't even say Cinderella is one of my most watched Disney films. Even, I mean, I watch all of them. I've got a four-year-old daughter, but I wouldn't say Cinderella is like the one we watch the most. And um, I would recognize it. I would know if they were wrong, especially like the asymmetrical shoulder lines and the one at her hip. Those things are just something that I would notice. After you have those rips done, you're going to want to add a darker color of a pinky red tone, and you're going to add a little bit of a shading shadow around the material that is ripped and folded over. After those have been cured, you can carefully remove them from the aluminum foil, especially with the hair. Be careful you don't break it. If you do break it, you're just going to have to glue it back together. Once we have that first one done, rewrap the nail with aluminum foil, add a couple more magnets back on top, and then you can start doing 
doing the fun one, which is going to be the beautiful blue dress. And when I was making this dress, the whole time I was thinking, how crazy do I want to go with it? Do I want it to look really rippled and really beautiful and different layers? Or do I want to take the easy route? I did not take the easy route. I went all in for it. I sculpted in all of those ripples and I do not regret a single moment of it. I was just so happy with the way it turned out. I do also want to mention that whenever you're doing these designs and you are wrapping the things with aluminum foil, you really need to wrap them tightly. It is hard to describe how much time I actually put in to smoothing out the aluminum foil. It's one of those things where in the video, it seems like it's just so quick, especially with this one. I didn't show you the second time I wrapped it, but it just seems so fast and so um, easy and effortless. And not that it's difficult, but you really have to look at it and be very tedious about making sure that every single little wrinkle that may possibly mess up the design is out of it. You also need to make sure that you can clearly see the details that are underneath the aluminum foil. So in this case, we have to make sure that the aluminum foil is tightly packed around her arms because we're going to be sculpting gloves. And if it isn't really snug around her arms, the gloves are going to look really big. So the tighter you can get the aluminum foil around all the little details of Cinderella, the better the outcome is going to be. Another thing to keep in mind while you're sculpting your initial base of Cinderella is that anything that's going to be covered up, her body, her the top of her head, her arms, is you might want to sculpt them slightly smaller, slightly thinner than what you want the outcome to look like because once you add all of these layers on top of them, they're going to thicken. So if you make her waist or her arms or anything bigger than bigger than normal or bigger than you'd want it to look it's just going to get exaggerated once you add on the acrylic clothing so if you were you know on the fence on how big to make something just err on the thin side just to make sure that it doesn't end up looking way too thick and not that any of these pieces look horrendously thick or anything but it's just you know each little thing you can do to help keep them looking thin and I don't know thin's not even the word I'm going for not like skinny but just um like they're fitted to her the better. So we're going to do the first little base of the skirt and then we're going to go through and we're going to add secondary and, and different layers on top of it. Press your brush in, uh, pull some of the acrylic up so you can actually kind of almost see underneath some of the ripples of the skirt, add more layers to it. Just keep going through and adding more layers to the blue, to the blue material. The more ripples and ruffles and, and curls and swirls that you can add to this, the more just elegant and beautiful and full the skirt is going to look. I highly recommend not only looking at some photos of Cinderella's Cinderella's dress, but also you can get um, little video clips of just the scene where she first puts on the dress and she's twirling around. That'll give you a really good idea of how the dress moves. And while you may not know how that's going to affect the outcome of your art because, you know, you're not acting going to be watching the video continuously as you're sculpting sometimes those things affect you in ways that you aren't even aware of so if you watch how the dress moves it might just give you an idea or you can always go back and you can watch it periodically if it does seem to be helping you to get an idea of how some you know single element would look that maybe your photos just can't provide you know a photo only tells so much especially when you're sculpting something that's three-dimensional the photo is 2d it's got the outlines in it and it doesn't quite give you that full spectrum guide especially to something as as fluid and as flowy and as movie as this dress is so we got the skirt and then we're going to be sculpting in the bodice so her bodice has a pretty smooth just tank tile stop t top tank style top it's got the sparkly little cap sleeves and then it's also um, right at the bottom it's got the two side pieces that go up and over her hips that are going to be in that kind of sparkly off-white color this is one of the prettiest colors i have for this particular situation it's just a nice slightly slightly glittery off-white just really pretty so after you have all of those pieces on this is where i was deciding if i was going to sculpt the gloves or not i sculpted my original cinderella base with the notion that i could sculpt in the gloves and i just couldn't decide if i thought they would be strong enough to last and evidently i decided that they would be but i was still just trying to go back and decide and like does this seem like a good idea or are they just going to break off if you want, you can go through and you can add more details to the skirt with some layers of white. That is something that obviously you can do like I am and sculpt them in with acrylic. Or if you want to, you can just do them with some paint and add in some little, you know, white lines and lacy details with paint later. I did a little bit of both. So I'm going to start out with some of those little white ruffles sculpted in. And then later I'll go through and I will add more to them, add more of them and do just a little bit more refining with that white acrylic white acrylic paint so there's another one that's inside that one big ruffle on the side kind of pull it down and around 
and just add them whenever, wherever it seems like they're needed. I'm going to be adding the headband across the top of her head, really skinny little line of that same light blue acrylic. If the color that you're using for her hair, if especially if it's one that you've mixed, then you would know. If it has any of um, the really classic orange pigment in it, it will bleed into the color of your blue and it will turn it brown. That's just something to watch for. There are several orange based acrylics whether they're brown tones or not that will do that so it's something that every once in a while i just like to mention because if you've never sculpted two colors on top of or any color on top of some of your browns you may just want to check it out just to see if the color bleeds through orange is notorious for that it doesn't even matter how cured it is i even had a orange um, just regular lacquer polish from a long time ago that no matter what i painted on top of it it turned orange and so I would, uh, the first time I used it, I painted, I don't remember whose face it was. I spent a long time painting a face with acrylic paint on top of this lacquer color. And the whole face turned like splotchy and orange and bruised. It was the most disheartening thing. As soon as I put top coat on, the whole thing just morphed into this, I don't know, beaten and battered looking person. It was, <laughs> it was very upsetting. So I'm just so cautious about oranges ever ever since then not the fruit though fruit's good so after we have the blue dress you're going to do the same thing and carefully remove it from the aluminum foil and now we're going to start painting the facial features and all the other details on the body i personally find it a lot easier to place her facial features with at least one of her hairdos on you can pick whichever one you want to do and then you can draw in those facial features they are so teeny tiny use the smallest brush you have dilute your paint a little bit so it's not quite as intense and pigmented it'll smooth on in thinner lines as well as just looking a little less harsh especially for the first lines as you're trying to find where all of her facial features are placed i would go in with a brown paint and do it that way i personally um was not super happy with the look of her face as you can see i'm changing like her eyebrow position right now and i just kind of went through and i just did some things which is the great thing about starting all of your designs out that are faces with brown paint is that you can for the most part just sort of avoid them and use them as a guide and kind of adjust how things are one thing i did do though is i did this off camera i took a little file and i filed off the darker brown line that's underneath her eyes because i thought it looked like she had dark bags under her eyes and those particular lines i was like ooh, those have got to go so i just took a little hand file and i buffed them off and they came right off and it didn't affect any of the other paint i'm going to place the cinderella dress on top of of her so we've got we can add the details to her hair we can add the details to her dress you can go through and do all of the detailing on this as you want if you are trying to decide whether or not to add the black necklace because she's got the little choker necklace on while she's wearing the blue dress and that is not there while she's wearing the pink one, I added it on. I felt like it really completed the blue outfit and it could be easily ignored off the pink one. But that was one of those where it's another thing where it's like, how do you correct that? And it's just a decision, you know, just make a decision. We're going to be adding some white lines kind of all over the dress. They really help add to that element of movement. They help brighten things up. They help outline and they really help show off all of the ripples and the ruffles that you sculpted in. Add some little outlines here and there with the white across the top of her dress as well on the gloves if you want to basically on the dress or any of these places instead of outlining where you would normally with black outline them with white light gray or a different shade of blue you don't want any black at all on this dress it is glowing in the moonlight there is no place for black lines on this add a little bit of uh, definition on her hair if you want to you can add some little bit of brown lines you could add some kind of a golden color highlights if you'd like not necessary but any of those things you can do so now we're going to switch over to the pink dress and same thing no place for black lines here we want soft lines pretty lines on the areas where the dress is ripped i am going to take a big a burgundy type of a color and i'm going to do outlines there just on the sides where they're ripped and then i'm going to do a little bit of gray kind of outlining shadowing on the white part of the dress just to add some more movement to that a little bit of rippling and then some lines on her hair simple we aren't kind of we're not overdoing it on this and then with that burgundy color that i used on her dress i'm also going to be drawing on her little shoes her feet do not show with the blue dress so her shoes can be the same either way then we're going to be applying some gel sealer over the background make sure all of those glitters really sparkle really shine and that background is just absolutely stunning after you have all of that done you can go ahead and cure it and then we're going to go through and we are going to apply matte top coat over all of the different 3d elements so when you're applying top coat you're going to need to very carefully top coat cinderella's body anywhere that there's paint 
and then both dress outfits and make sure that you leave those to the side to dry completely. You do not want any residual tackiness left on these when you start to put them together. Once they have dried and you are confident that they are not going to stick together at all, you can go ahead and you can play dress up with your Cinderella and it is really so much fun. There are just so many different ways that you know you can tell little stories with them. You can just play with them. It is the coolest thing. I hope you guys are as excited about these little dress up designs as I am. If you have any other ideas for a dress up character design, please let me know in the description box below. I'd love to see what they are and I'd love to make some more for you. So don't forget to share any of those ideas with me and I will see you all next time. Bye.